Okay. Okay, the recording is pro in progress, and it looks like we're live out on Facebook, and that's as it should be. And I thank you all for joining me today. Let me just uh, uh, let me um, just get this. Let me see here. How do I get rid of this? Okay, let me just do that. Okay. Anyway, we're okay. We're fine. We're on Facebook. Okay, all is doing well. Let me just check over here to make sure we're going out over Facebook. I just like to make sure of it. Uh, and uh, yes, we are. There we are. Okay, good. Hi, everybody. Uh, I'm Alex. We're doing a special show today at four o'clock. Um, I had uh, planned on doing this a few days ago or when we were going to do it. I decided it was time to do it. And there are a lot of people who call us on the uh, Monday four o'clock show uh, who know Shecky because he was there every week. Uh, and um, so I've given them the opportunity to kind of bid their fond farewells and just, uh, you know, sit here and just talk about him and about his life. In case people who are just tuning in don't know what I'm talking about, uh, my good friend, Rick Sheckman, Richard Sheckman, Shecky to some people, Rick to me, um, died. Uh, he was my friend for... What, how, we're, we're trying to figure out whether it was 45 or 50 years, but it's somewhere in that range. I would say it's maybe more like 48 years or something. It's a hell of a long time to know somebody. And uh, there wasn't a time in all that period that we weren't in contact with each other. And in fact, for the last 25 or maybe 30 years, uh, I used to call him every Saturday. When I was out in California, for instance, it started the tradition started out in California. Call him every Saturday, and we would talk for like an hour, an hour and a half, long discussions. And that continued into me moving here. And in many cases, it wasn't me going, uh, calling him, but actually getting on the subway and getting out to see him. That has minimized a great deal over the years because we, you know, uh, have been um, had a problem. Uh, it was called COVID, and it prevented us from getting around. Now, somebody says here, name Roger and Zephyr. I don't know you, so I'm going to remove you, at least for the time being. And if you're legitimate, call me back uh, uh, later. Uh, but I want to just let all the people in here uh, who are I know are legitimate uh, people. Uh, and uh, we got Mark Thorner, and we got Marjorie, and we've got uh, Mandy, and we've got Steve Bender. Good Mark to see you, Steve. Uh, Len LaFrisco, Andrew Deutsch. Uh, there's Mark Thorner, uh, Edward Berger. Adrian Gruberg is uh, connecting here. Adrian is an old friend of Shecky's. Paul Levin, uh, and she's followed by Paula 12. And uh, also, uh, I, I, let's see here, Adrian. Oh, there she is. Okay, I, uh, you know, I don't know how many of the regular people. Who's Roger and Zephyr? Does anybody know who that is? You know, because I that's suspicious to me. But I'm going to give it a try, and if it's some porn, please don't mind it. Uh, we'll, uh, we'll 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 get it. Let me see here. Is it somebody that we know? They're not joining. Uh, they, here comes uh, Edward Berger. Uh, let's see, Roger and Zephyr. Uh, it doesn't, uh, they're not connect. They're just connecting their audio. Are you there, Roger and Zephyr? Okay, I'm going to, hold on a second. I'm going to remove, I'm going to try to remove them, but I can't get down there. Oh, gosh. Almighty. Uh, here, hold on a second. Here, oh. It just won't go. I'm trying to get down to removing them, and uh, I can't get rid of them. Mm. Let me see here. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold. What is that? It's really strange that I can't get rid of them. Uh, I, I try to go down here to remove, and it won't remove. <laughs> Uh, let me see here. Chat, make host. No, uh, no. Damn it. 
this is a terrible thing. This is, I don't get it. I really want to get rid of them. And I can't. Hmm. Oh, boy. Hmm. Oh, well. Yeah. Uh, this is uh, Roger and Zephyr. I don't know who that is. I have no idea. And I go down all, I try to go all the way down on this thing where I can get rid of them and I can't get rid of them. And just forget it. Well, no, I want to get rid of them because it might be some porn person. Okay. Somebody trying to do a <laughs> boom thing. And if, as I go down to remove them, it just doesn't allow me to go that far down the list. Oh, that's ridiculous. Oh, I hate this. Uh, oh, I know what I can do. I know what I can do. Let me go here to uh, Roger and Zephyr, and then I'll go here, and I can remove them. There we go. Okay. <laughs> here we go. There we go. Well, that was, I, I found if I went over to the other side here, I could get rid of them. Hello, everybody. How are you? Good. We're, we're missing somebody today. We're missing <laughs> Shecky. <laughs> Uh, and um, let me, I, I guess this is probably a surprise to some of you. Um, uh, let me explain the, what happened. Uh, we did a show, the last time I ever you know, saw Shecky uh, was on our Monday show of last week. Mm -hmm. And um, what, was, was he on the Monday show this week? What, what no. Did, no. Did I talk it, it was on the 27th. Yeah, I talked about it on the Monday show, right? Right. And what happened was, is that uh, he has a good friend, Randy, who is the assistant director on the Letterman show, who has been really close to him because she also, she she's the closest to him, literally, physically in Queens. And so whenever Shecky needed something or whatever, Randy was available and a good friend of his and always there to help him. In the last couple of months, she's been driving him places. Uh, like to um, uh, uh, to you know uh, Stu Leonard's, which was his favorite place to shop for food, and and she was a, a really good friend to him, and he was supposed to go on a cruise. Um, let me see if I get this right on on Thursday. So on Wednesday, I left him a message. I called him, but he didn't answer. So I left him a message wishing him bon voyage. And then the next day, I, I texted him saying bon voyage and uh, no reply. And then it turns out a few days later, I get a call from Randy. And she says, let me tell you what happened. She says, I didn't hear from him on Monday, on Wednesday. And on Thursday, I knew he was supposed to leave, but I figured I'd go in and just check for the hell of it. And she went in on Thursday, I think. Wasn't it Thursday, Marjorie? Yeah. I think. I don't know if I'm getting it right. It, it was. It was a Thursday. Over. Yeah. And she found him uh, on the floor, unable to get up. And so she, of course, did the thing we all do. Uh, we call an ambulance. It seems that that's a number that's on our speed dial when you get older, you know. 911. 911, right. Mm -hmm. And so um, he, she called an ambulance. They took him to Queen, the hospital in Queens. And they immediately sent him to uh, Bellevue, uh, which is funny because the only time, other time I've been to Bell Bellevue was to visit a girlfriend who went crazy. Uh, so, you know, because they're famous for their psych ward. Uh, right, Edward Berger? That's right. <laughs> yeah, okay. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, uh, and, and in the hospital he was, I found out about it on Saturday. I don't know why it took her so long, but, you know, she had a lot on her plate, so I don't blame her. But she got a hold of me and said, uh, Rick's in at Bellevue. And I immediately, you know, called a car and got down there. And uh, finally got up to see him. And I say finally, because what happens is when you're in critical care, you they only allow two people in the room at a time. And it would be nice if they let as many people up who want to go up, but they don't. They just let two people go up. So I had to get somebody to vacate their position there. And I got up there and saw him. And by that time he was out. And I said to the nurse, gee, is he out? She says, no, he's just got some Benadryl in him. Let me wake him up. And she kept pinching his cheeks and everything. And he wouldn't wake up. 
Uh, and I just kind of said a few kind words and felt rather frustrated. There was nothing I could do. Um, so that was Saturday. Then we had Sunday and we had Monday and all kinds of reports about what was happening. What day did I go down this week, Marjorie? Was it uh, Wednesday? Was it Wednesday? Yeah. Yeah. Was it Wednesday? Other people know more about my life than I do. <laughs> Uh, and I went down Wednesday with my friend Steve, who is also a close friend of Rick's. And in fact, is the guy who introduced me to Rick you know, some 45 to 50 years ago. And uh, we went there. And of course, I walk into the room and he's, you know, he's got a, a, a thing down his throat and he's he's on, uh, what do they call it, in intubation. Intubation. And, and I learned another term when they take it off, it's exubation. <laughs> um, and uh, do you know that, Mark, Mandy? You, you nodded your head. No, we were saying it on Monday. Oh. Uh, apparently, it is a real word. It extubated, yeah. Anyway, uh, he was intubated. He had all these oh. things feeding him, you Question. know, one Thank thing you. or another. But he was off of sedation, and he was still out. I mean, completely out. And uh, people who had talked to the doctors and the nurses, they said, you know, his organs are shutting down, you know, and, uh, you know, his kidney, kidneys were starting to go and, and this and that. And um, I sat there, you know, kind of frustrated because you're there for your friend. You want to do something for him and you can't do anything. And he doesn't know you're there. I mean, I whispered in his ear and said, hi, you know, Rick, this is Ben. That's what he used to call me, Ben. Uh, and um, uh, that's how long we know each other. And uh, I whispered in his ear, I said, I don't know if you can hear me, but I want you to know I love you. And uh, uh, damn it, come back to us, you know. And, um, and then I left because I realized, nothing. what can I do there? The reason I'm there in the first place is more for me than for him. How am I helping him, you know? Um, the only thing I could do is try and, you know, cure the problem and get them out of the bed and tap dancing, but I can't do it. So I left. I said, you know, the more I can do here. And so Steve and I left and uh, that was the last I saw him. I hate to think that that's the last I saw him because that's the last image I will have of him. Uh, and I would rather have the image that I had uh, about a, a week after this one. <clears throat> and he was up in that square up in the corner and he was alive and well and kicking and snarky, you know, and uh, uh, it, it just it, it to me, it's a it's it is a, the great loss of my life because I have to tell you, I mean, he was <laughs> my best friend, you know, uh, and he's the last living one. Uh, I had two others. Uh, one was my friend Steve, who left us many years ago, quite a few years ago, married to Adrian down there. And uh, the other one was uh, Bruce David. Twelve, who, who 12 awesome. years. You, what were you saying, Adrian? Twelve years. Twelve years ago, and counting. Yeah, yeah. And and uh, that was uh, you know a great loss for me, as it was of course for Adrian, and uh, my friend uh, Bruce David, who just killed over and died out in California. He was the one of the editor of Hustler magazine when I was writing for it. And, and we had not talked to each other in 20 years. And all of a sudden, one day, he wound up on my radio show in San Francisco promoting Hustler. And uh, uh, I, I we went out to lunch and we suddenly said, what am I mad at you about? And he said, I said, because I can't remember. And he said, I can't remember either. And we then became best of friends. You know, we were in... Uh, he was in California, but we were always talking to each other and always dealing with each other and always enjoying each other's company. Um, a difficult person, as was Steve, and at times <laughs> as was Shecky. But I tend to be, go towards, be drawn towards people who are difficult, you know. Uh, <laughs> they don't have the normal personalities. And, and Shecky could be cranky at times. <clears throat> uh, but I loved him more than I can say here, uh, more than I want to without sounding like gay. You know, I mean, I just, I, I, I loved them and, and I'm going to miss them. And uh, 
I for every, almost every Saturday or Sunday for the last um, oh I don't know uh, how many years uh, how many years did I say Marjorie maybe thirty years yeah I've been every Saturday or Sunday I would call him when I was out in California I would call him every Saturday at one o'clock California time and he knew he could count on me calling him he was right there at the phone ready to grab it. And and to this day, Marjorie will attest attest to this. Uh, it uh, I uh, have constantly been in, talking to him every Saturday or Sunday. Yes. It's very common for me to say to her, "I got to call Shecky," you know. And so uh, that was the, the and if uh, before COVID there were Saturdays I didn't call him, but that's because I went out there and hung out with him. Uh, and so that was, you know, that, it's a it's a relationship that had hallmarks to it, and things that, if if I don't seem like I'm that distressed over this, I will be the first time I can't call him on Saturday, okay, and the first time that I can't do this or that with him, uh, and uh, you know, it's. Uh, it's it's amazing uh, the relationship we had over the years, and it was a good one, and I appreciate it, and I'm, I'm going to miss him dearly. Now you people got into his life by simply calling our Monday program, and I, I one, one saving grace you got, Alex, is that he's got some video laying around that you can go back and watch too. Yeah, well, if you go on to uh, YouTube right now. They put up a thing uh, called uh, Remember Remembering Rick. Remembering yeah. Rick. Rick. That was yeah. Really good. Really yeah. good. And it it it, it shows him. Um, <laughs> I think it was kind of like Dave liked to put him in funny costumes <laughs> and then make him perform because he couldn't act to save his life. Mm -hmm. Okay. And uh, but he was Elvis on there and he was. Uh, uh, he was naked on there one time. Yeah, <laughs> yeah but to your point, I, you've I got, couldn't you've believe got it him. was the same guy. Like I couldn't believe that. This, right? When I started doing the Zoom, I'm like, "This is the same guy that was on Letterman." That Mandy, was always that was 30 years ago. I watched Letterman 30 years ago, <laughs> <laughs> but I'm just like, I can't believe that's the same dude because he was so just, you know, Young. he didn't seem like he would have been that way. Yeah. But to your point, you've got him last week. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, we got him last week. Yeah, yeah, and he looked actually he looked healthier than he's looked in a while. Uh, he he didn't look bad when I watched it last week. Did they yeah. ever say what might have been wrong with him yet? Or well, I I'm going to say it now. I I had, did not say it uh, in the last week or so because I was very quiet about this, just simply because I you know, uh, what ultimately I think killed him was how can I put it this. He, I think he was a secret drinker. I think that's the best way to describe it. All well, I know cirrhosis is, of the liver, Alex. Well, um, mm. uh, yeah, well, uh, you just blew it for me, Marjorie. I was leading oh, up to it. You know. <laughs> you know you can actually get that without being a drinker, but, you know, yes. I, mean, yeah. I think it's probably rare, but I think you can't get well, it. Well, I, for instance, I went all the way across, travel all the way across the United States with him. And every time we were going, we'd stop at a Costco and he'd buy a couple of gallons of vodka. Like handles? I, yeah. I think maybe it had a handle on it or whatever. Well, that's what they, well, those big ones they call a handle. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And uh, and by the, within a couple of days, the bottles were empty. And oh, I think wow. I mentioned it to you, right, Adrian? Yes, I mentioned it to you uh, yeah. at the time when we came back, because the first place we wound up was at Steve's office to drop off some stuff. And I told you that I, he, I think he's got a little drinking problem, but he never got drunk. I mean, and in talking to Shecky about the vodka and the drinking, uh, he said, I wish I did get drunk. He said, right. because if I gotten drunk all the time, I probably would have quit. He said, but I never got really drunk. You know, I never felt really loaded. And um, he stopped in August of this year oh. and hasn't ha didn't have a drink since August. Um, that we know of. That you know of, right. I I believe him, you know, he, because he's pretty, uh, he was telling me, oh, I'm going on this, uh, this uh, cruise 
And um, I plan to drink a little on the cruise. I was going to say, it's awful hard not to drink on a cruise. Yeah, <laughs> right. Drinker. Or eat. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and on a cruise, and uh, it was, it was, um, uh, uh, the, so he would tell me, I think, if he was drinking. And he said, honestly to me, he said, I quit in August. All right. He said, I haven't had a drink since August. But apparently that wasn't enough to save his life. You know, it was just too late. And ultimately, I think it was the cirrhosis that was the catalyst for all everything else shutting everything down. Else, you know? Right. Uh, <laughs> and I just never I never thought it would kill him. That's the only thing. And in recent weeks, when I've gone out there in a cup by about four weeks ago, I was out there. He was walking very slow and looked very frail. Hmm. uh to me and i just figured oh maybe it was you know he'd been in for he would been they'd said he was anemic and they sent him to the hospital and gave him a blood transfusion uh and i figured that's ah, that you know it's the anemia it's giving him the weakness but he didn't look well and then my friend steve said they'd seen him about two weeks ago and he was you know he's walking kind of slow and you know frail and uh, I just, you know, uh, it was hard for me to think that he was sick. It just seemed like there was something not quite right, you know. Mm -hmm. um, but it, it, you know, I think he knew something was happening. And, and the way I kind of think he knew was that I, for years, had bugged him about getting a... Um, a what do you call it? A, a, a will. Will. Uh, because over the years, uh, Shecky's gotten quite wealthy. He, his brother has invested a lot of his money, and he's made a lot of money, and he's worth many millions of dollars, okay? And I said, you don't want to not have a will. You know, you don't want to have a problem where you, uh, you, uh, uh, you die, and then there's some lawyer who's going to make money off of your estate, and then uh, the money's not going to go to your your relatives he didn't have any children or anything but your relatives your family your brother or whatever uh because it's going to go into probate and it's it's not you're not going to be able to do anything with it. um and i said get a i get a will and i kept telling him this you know i said i want you to you got to get a will you got to get a will i can't see you having all that money all the all the tapes and all the films you have and all those other things you know and finally, about two months ago, he went to his lawyer and he said, guess what? I went to my lawyer and I told him what I wanted to give to people and so on and so forth. And he drew up a will and um, he's sending me and I'm sending it to me. I'm going to sign it. You know, I'll put it in a drawer here or something. He told, I think, Randy where it was. And he wow. said, just in case. And, uh, you know, mm -hmm. and it was awfully all, all of a sudden it was a priority for him. You know, and it wasn't, and so I don't know what doctors told him. I don't know what was going on there because to drag, drag stuff out of him, I mean, he would tell me stuff, you know, uh, but he wouldn't, it's many times he would be candid about other stuff. And I think this health thing was kind of getting, oh. him, you know, because he had had a process of passing out over the last couple of months. Uh, yeah. And, uh, that's why he went to a doctor and the doctors didn't see anything. They, oh, you have anemia. You need a transfusion. That was it. But they didn't check for all this. People, other people huh? internally feel yeah. those things. And Maybe people so. seem wait, wait, wait. To, yeah. my, my, my wife's father did the same thing. And we think that he knew for several months that things were failing inside. And all of a sudden things started falling into place. And, and Checky, the way it sounds like to him, to me, just from the side is that you know if he quit in august he decided to do his will he had some kind of intuition inside him that mm -hmm. things were getting weird right and, I believe that. and he was he was internally processing that mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. there was probably something going on inside him and, and i've seen that before you know what i went through with my best friend a couple of years ago yeah, uh, with, with the ALS that that was more external, but 
things are going on internally with him too that I saw. And mm -hmm. it happened the same kind of way. And I've seen that happen with my, with my mom, with my father-in-law and it's, it, it happens to people. And well, I don't know that one of these doctors didn't tell him he was dying. Right. Yeah. And that he was yeah. never possible. He was never going to tell me that. Right. You know? mm -hmm. I mean, and he did tell me a lot of things, you know, and a lot of personal stuff, but that I think he would have kind of hid away from me. You know? Oh, absolutely. I believe that too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Sometimes they tell you to get your affairs in order. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So how long yeah. did he have the cruise ticket? He, 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 I don't know, a couple, a couple of months he was getting going to go on this cruise. You know, he had it all set up. He was going to go. go. Yeah. By, by the way, there's somebody waiting to come on, and it simply says Zoom user. I'm not going to let you on until you put your name there. In, in, in. <laughs> Good. Zoom Good. user is not enough for me. <laughs> yeah. Um, but anyway, that, you know, uh, what I'm telling you about him is that he, he was singularly my best friend. I love the guy. I think I'm a good judge of character, you know, and I wouldn't make somebody my friend unless they really deserved it. And you people are my friends too, but it's not in the same way, you know, because you're distant and I know you, I mean, I know Mark Thorner a long time through this show, basically. Um, you know, I've had lunch with Steve Bender. Uh, and I suppose if I got out to California, I might go see Kevin. Although I, I maybe let me know if you don't want me to come see. You better. <laughs> Give him a warning. If I were down in Atlanta, I'd say hi to Mandy. And anytime she's up here, she's welcome to come over and say hello to us. Any of you are, you know, Len well, Like I told you, you I'd never met Rick in person, but I felt like he was a friend, you know? Yeah. I, yeah. I, I was, I well, was bummed like, out uh, big time. I think the, if these shows have, are good for nothing else, yeah. it's that people become friends with each other. I'm you know. sorry he couldn't make it to lunch with us when we went, Alex, because I would have liked to have met him. Yeah, did I try to get him to come? Oh yeah, he was. Yeah, yeah he was going to come, and something happened. He couldn't make it. So yeah, yeah. So it got to a point towards the end where he didn't want to really go anywhere. Yeah. You know, I mean, I don't want to go anywhere either, but I'm pretty healthy, I think. You know, uh, he was. He yeah, was Mark, you want to say something? Uh, I'm, this is just a conjecture, but. I think if he knew that the end was near, mm -hmm. I think he wanted to exit on the cruise ship. <laughs> well, that could be too. But <laughs> you, know, you know, I'm thinking, you know. No, what I was what saying like to do. was thank God he wasn't on the cruise ship. Yeah. If he got really ill, he wouldn't have been able to get the kind of help that he would get if he were back here, you know. Yeah, but he liked to do that. So maybe that's what he wanted. You know, I often wonder about this. I mean, if it may, if Shecky had gone to another hospital like uh, Mount Sinai, might he be alive right now? You know, it's, it's the luck of the draw. You know, I, I you know I unless say that, it, huh? Unless his brother authorizes an autopsy. Yeah. Well, that, yeah. I don't think there needs to be one. I think we know what he died of. You know, that's not the problem. Uh, it's just that. One hospital will give you better care than another hospital for certain problems. Yeah, but it, yeah. sometimes it just prolongs the agony. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And it, if that's the case, inevitable. Yeah, yeah, I guess. And Is they make deal? money. And mm -hmm. I, I, you know, I kind of curse Shecky under my breath, going, "Damn it, you son of a bitch! Why didn't you take better care of yourself?" Yeah, well, I mean. I, anything that I've done in my lifetime, I'm, I, I'm, I, death scares the crap out of me. So when I see it happening right in front of me, you know, it, it only invokes more. Although I did come up with a little bit of a wise statement today to somebody in the email, and I, I and, and I, I simply said that uh, uh, I guess death is the biggest event of life. You know, I mean, that it it is a, you haven't really lived till you die. Let me put it that way. It's the second. Yeah, because I don't understand any of it. You know, I don't understand why we're even here. I mean, when I think about myself in the universe, I am, God, I, a speck of dust, you know, for a very short time. 
for an incredibly short time. You take the timeline of the Earth is what, 30 billion years? And I've only been here for 83 of those 3 billion? I'm pretty insignificant. And then you begin to wonder, why am I here at all? Why is, then, any, why huh? is, any, why is anything here at all? Right. Why, is there, yeah. why is there a universe? You know, why is yeah. There right. You know, uh, well, one thing I always think of is when, like when my stepdad passed, when my dad passed, especially, you know, people close to you pass, the first thing you're very sad and brokenhearted. But then there's this one step where you're like kind of envious. You're like, now they know the secret. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, you know, I used to be scared of death. And then I started thinking about, you know, I wasn't scared before I was born. Right. I'm, yeah. asking, I'm going back to that, whatever that is. It was fine. Yeah. I wasn't born, then I'm here, and now I'll be back you know, un unborn again, whatever. Well, you know, that, that's kind of what uh, oh, no. what, what my father used to say when I was a kid. I was I've been afraid of death all my life. I go, what what's it like when you die? You know, I can't imagine not being here, not being sentient, not nothing. I mean, no, and nothing is after this. And he, well, you've been there before. True. Yeah. Before you were you born. No before you were born and that was wonderful but not particularly soothing to me because then i started worrying about what it was like before i was born yeah. <laughs> <laughs> something know. else to worry about and you don't know that either but we have been there before and you know but i, I don't know you know i i was uh, it it it's it just i don't know it's, it's, you know i read last week i had a colonoscopy and <laughs> you know um and they give you the anesthesia, which is the Michael Jackson. You yeah, know, the propofol. Well, I like that. Yeah, count backwards from 20. You know, I get to 18. The next thing I know, they're waking me up. <laughs> I'm done. So I asked the doctor, I said, you know, I know you can't answer this, but is, do you think that's what it's like to be dead? And he said, I sure hope so. <laughs> <laughs> yes. There is this with propofol. There's this Wait moment that Marjorie loves. It's just a sh quick moment of a flash that is just, Wow. What a high. And then you, the doctor says, uh, you're ready to go home. Oh, wow. Yeah. You know. So, so you're crazy. equating death with having a tube inserted? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Death is like a colonoscopy, but like forever. Yeah. Wasn't that, wasn't that the line from Forrest Gump? What? It's like a colonoscopy. Oh, no, it's a box of chocolates. I'm sorry. It's a box of chocolates. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, so did Shecky just have the one brother, Alex? Does he have any other family? He just has one brother, yeah. Yeah. Um, and he, um, you know, I mean, uh, and the he and the brother were quite close, you know. Um, and his brother helped him helped him in the financial world with the, investing his money so that it uh, it really. Uh, he, he in the end he had a lot of money from all the investments his brother made for him he seemed like a very frugal man other than his cruises he really yeah he didn't uh, he didn't when it came what when, when it came to film and media yes he spent a fortune oh mm -hmm. boy the guy's library is yeah. i mean that's how i knew more about him mm -hmm. and it's just amazing where did when did you see it I was aware of him through other people. And I think when he was working for Letterman, I might have taught him Adobe After Effects when I taught the whole editorial department. That's oh. a long, that was over that's almost like 1999. He might have been part of that group. Yeah. But I was aware of him because I liked Letterman and I knew just who the, you know, who's who's who. And when he was on screen, it was always really funny, you know. Well, his, his, um, there were two things. And uh, number one, he collected DVDs. Like they were, he was still buying them. And I said, what are you buying them for? You know, he says, I don't know. It's just a thing. Right. But I mean, you see how many I have here. Think about how many he had. Jeez almighty. You know? And I said, what's going to happen to these when you die? He says, they're going to wind up in a dumpster outside the house. <laughs> and, um, I, you know, uh, but then he also <laughs> had what he had was, uh, and this is how he, how he and his friends started a film stock uh, company, is that he had he collected early on film on film, cans and cans and cans of film. I mean, uh, enough so much 
that he had to store them out in New Jersey at uh, Bonded, I think is the name of the place where they where they store all these things. And uh, they were sitting there. Um, you know, he didn't keep film in the house anymore or at the company. And eventually the Library of Congress bought his film collection for a quarter of a million dollars. Yeah, I remember him talking about that. Yeah, yeah. And so, I mean, he got at least cleaned out the house a little bit. You know? <laughs> but Randy was wrote me and she said, oh, I'm not going to get into it now, but I got to take care of the house. And I said, well, I'll help you in any way I can if you want me to come out and, and help you with the stuff. And then I'm thinking about it and I'm going, I better move in out there hmm. because he's got all these DVDs. That's just to start with. Then he's got comic books. Then he's got comic book. He's got statues and paintings of comic strips. And baseball cards. And baseball card. He has a baseball card collection that I think is probably worth a lot of money. I mean, it's just, he's got a lot of stuff. Well, you did, didn't you do a tour? Or he did a tour through his house one, day, one time. Yeah, well, I'm going to show that. I'm going to show, I'm I'm show that tonight on the show. Yeah, it was only partial. Yeah, I'm going to show a bit of his. I have a, a video I may call a trip to Shecky's. Yeah. I'm just going to run it and people can see it. it, it it's like, uh, but there's so much stuff there. I don't know what goes in the dumpster and what doesn't go in the dumpster. You know, you almost need to have one of those estate um, companies yeah. come out and, you know, and sell it and do whatever they do. Well, I'm, I think the DVDs on the whole are not worth a hell of a lot. Probably not. Okay. But he did do a lot of buys of rare DVDs, things like, uh, you know, maybe a compilation of, of something that they only made 20 copies of, it, you know. So uh, I, I don't know uh, what exactly is there or not there, but just the common movies that he bought. No, those things can go in the dumpster. You can't even give those things away to libraries anymore. Mm. You know, uh, When I die, everything that's in back of me and I've got something like a thousand of them in some boxed up. Uh, I mean, what are these going to be worth? You, they go in the dumpster, you know. So, um, so oh, remember oh. all the laser discs. Uh, all the laser discs, yeah. Mm -hmm. We both had, yeah. yeah. Yeah, well, he had them too. He probably still yeah. has them. I have them too. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, I got rid of most of mine when I left California. You know. Um, I couldn't see any reason to keep them. I mean, what you laser disc? Wow, everybody wants a laser disc right now. <laughs> I, I, gave them away. I even still have one laser disc player out there in storage. So, in case I ever want to play one of the laser discs, I can. Alex, you can make more money selling that on eBay. Yeah. Really? Oh, yeah. Oh, I'll have to look it up. I have to look it up. And, you know, but I have to also get out there to get it. <laughs> But you know, did I mean, you, did you check for eight tracks too? <laughs> yeah, right. No, I don't have eight tracks, but I have every form of videotape you can possibly imagine. But you know, I, I it, so I mean, clearing that stuff out is going to be just a real task, and I I don't know how she should go about it, but I would hire some people to come and do half the work. You know, it's mm -hmm. not it's not worth doing the hard grunt work on that stuff but there there are really good auction companies that can help with them yeah i mean if you come in if, and gather the collections and, and well this is up i think this is up to the family because i guess yeah. they're, they're going to have control of the house do and, you know if the family is going to post something if people want to make donations or do something in his memory that i don't know you know you'll let us know i'll let you know yeah thank yeah. you um, but I mean, uh, I don't know his family probably will take possession of the house. Sure. I would imagine, uh, I'm, I, if he didn't leave that to his brother, I'd be amazed. Cause it's the, it's the, the, the house that he and his brother grew up in, you know, I was uh, always amazed that he was still living in his childhood bedroom. So. Yes. <laughs> that, now, that, that is the part that really always got me. Yeah, his yeah. Mo his mother died. And by the way, when his mother was sick, what this kid did to take care of his mother, he's a saint. 
You know, I mean, she was dying. She was pooping in the bed. He had to clean up the poop in the bed and the thing, you know, and and uh, she didn't really want somebody to come in and take care of her. And Shecky literally spent the last few years of her life attending to her needs. He had no life himself. Wow. And then when she went, I, I he called me, he said, my mother died yesterday. And I said, I'm happy for you. Oh and mm. I, said, I don't mean that in any terrible way. Right. You've had to go through a lot with her dying. And I'm glad that, uh, you know, that, uh, that, uh, that she's not, uh, uh, not suffering any longer and that you are not suffering any longer. Um, was, he, was, was he ever in a relationship or was he just alone his whole, the whole time? I don't know about his relationships. You know, every now and then he'd say, I have a girlfriend. Right. And we met one one time. Oh, we did meet one one time. She was yeah. terrible. She was horrible. <laughs> <laughs> and he finally came to the conclusion she was horrible too. You remember? Yeah. But that was the only one I ever met. You know, hmm. um, I know he used to date women at the Letterman show, you know, which is not unusual. You always have relationships with people you work with because they're the people who spend the most, you spend the most time with. I think he was painfully um, shy, to be honest with you. Huh? I think he was painfully shy. I mean, he seemed like a very... I think he was shy. And he I, seemed don't so I, don't know I, I don't know if I call it shyness. Uh, I, I, you know, I, I wouldn't, if somebody had said, hey, Shecky's shy. Uh, I go, well, I don't know if he's shy. He's well, just... That, Huh? On that, uh, remembering uh, 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 Rick on uh, the, that I uh, watched, uh, which was an absolutely lovely tribute. Um, I, I just know him from the, the the short amount of time from your program, but yeah, he looked, he looked like a sweet, um, a little bit sad, uh, mm -hmm. a cute young man. Yeah, you know, who was like a a, a very willing. Well, uh, he, you know what he was here, here. Let me let me just cut to the chase on this. What yeah. Rick was was the ultimate geek. Mm. He was a geek. You know, he was. Uh, uh, am, am I right, Mark? Would you agree with that? Yeah, yeah. He was the ultimate geek, and and that's why all the collecting of films and things like that. You know, and the baseball cards and the comic books. I mean, this is. Uh, this is a person who's a who's a geek, and that's what I really loved about him. You know, was was that that uh, geekiness? Because I feel I'm a geek. At bottom line, I'm complete geek. Yes. So you know, I I just I, I I'm just amazed when I look back on my history with him, how many things I did with him. You know, my ex girlfriend wrote me today saying, I'm so sorry to hear it. And I thought for a moment, I said, of course, she knows him very well. Because one of the highlights I had with Rick was being at the comedy competition in San Francisco. And they, they asked me to be the uh, a judge. Mm -hmm. And I went, oh, judge, oh, okay, fine, a judge. I hate being a judge in a comedy competition because I know all these comics because they come on my show and I don't want to do it. And years and years, for years and years, I refuse to be a judge. Finally, they really prevailed on me. And I said, okay. And so I brought Rick and my girlfriend with me. And they sat on either side of me. And I said, you watch who I vote for and don't vote for. And if you think that I'm slanting the vote and I'm wrong, let me know. And they they were kind of my the two angels on my shoulder while I was trying to do what was an impossible thing for me to do, which was to judge people I know. And uh, that I remember that distinctly as a highlight. Another highlight was that Shecky was the first person to find out that Marjorie and I were married <laughs> because he met us out in California because we were all going out there to um, uh, see a performance with a live orchestra of Napoleon, which is a silent film and with uh, uh, Carl Davis doing the music and a full symphony orchestra there that he was conducting. So we, we literally went out for that purpose. And then I said to Marjorie, well, while we're there, why don't we go up to Lake Tahoe? I'd like you to see <laughs> Lake Tahoe. And then we decided, well, as long as we're going to Lake Tahoe, why the hell don't we get married? <laughs> well, we put the rings on the way. 
Hmm? Wow. Flowers in the in the in the, yeah. in the grocery store. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. cool. Yeah. And and so then we came back and we met him at the Walt Disney Museum in uh, in the Presidio mm-hmm. in uh, in in San Francisco, and uh, we just said, "Guess what." What were the first words out of his mouth, Marjorie? You're married. You're married. <laughs> he, he knew what we'd do, you know. So we, uh, uh, he was the first person to find out we were married. So these are all yeah. moments that I go back and remember in the whole trip across the United States uh, where he was a great kind of navigator. He'd look at the map and go, turn here, turn there. And... Um, I also remember that he was the most boring person you could drive with across the United States. <laughs> because he would go five hours without saying anything in the car, without saying anything. And, uh, and, and, and that was the great part about our relationship, too. And he said, listen, I don't want anybody to come on a cruise with me, but you could. Mm. Because you know, he used to say this, you know when I am want to be alone. You know, when I don't want to be talked to. And that's true. I mean, I just, I respected the fact that this was part of who he was. So, you know, we this, this goes on and on and on. Uh, uh, memories that I have of him and, and things that we've done together. Uh, and it, I, it's not inconsequential. It's not small. It's not tiny. Um, and then... I guess the most important thing, and this is a tribute to all of you who are here who do the Monday show. And I'm sorry that not everybody got word on it because I think there's several other people who would want to be here, but I I put this up just a couple hours ago. But as he was being taken by ambulance to the hospital in Queens, uh, he, Randy said, he said to her, I got to get back by Monday because I have to do the show. Mm. <laughs> so his only thought was being with you guys, you know, and that's a tribute to how you, how you affected him. He loved this group of people. After every show, I would call him on the phone immediately after the show was over. And he, I would say, another good one, okay? And he says, yeah, those people are great. You know, those people are wonderful. I love them. It's, he loved the, the group. You know. yeah. I say something, Alex. Sure. Two two things. One, it was always always fun to. I don't know where I'm going to find now. I'm out of people to laugh at my stupid nonsense, but now that <laughs> Rick's gone, but he was so lucky also to have you as a friend. And the little bit of communication I had with him, it was clear he really cared about you. Um, mm-hmm. And and we we I think maybe two or three times we 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 communicated by by message. Um, yeah. I, I've got a I've got a I've got to go, but uh, thank you so much for having us all on today. Thank you, Andrew. I appreciate it. I know he, he's not, I don't think he's a guy who would like a tribute, but he also wouldn't turn one down. Well, this isn't a tribute so much as it's a remembrance. This was was fantastic. Thank you so much. Okay. Thank you, Andrew. I appreciate it. Bye, everybody. I know you're a busy guy. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Uh, Anyway. It's really well, interesting to me because you know I haven't been able to do Mondays and I've really missed the show. And then just this week, I was thinking I got to hear Shecky get snarky about the Oscars. <laughs> yeah, no, just what I, I need it. I wanted to hear that, and I was you know. And then I went onto your page to make sure that, and I saw the message, and I was like, I can't believe it. I was, I was, he was just in my head. But I could hear him talk about the movies of the '30s and '40s versus this. He, year. Didn't, he didn't like to talk about the Oscars. Actually, he no. thought it was just stupid. Yeah. Well, yeah. that, I think that's what Steve means, yeah. and we miss you, Steve. By the way, yeah, we yeah, do. we do, we really do. It's so hard for me. So it's really... Yeah, but I mean, it, it, back, it, huh? Yeah, she's back from getting the groceries. Um, it, he, um, uh, yeah, he he didn't like the Oscars much. He didn't like competitions like that. You know, uh, although he could tell you probably everybody that won Oscars over the years. Because his his knowledge was encyclopedic about film. I mean, I just more than you'll ever know. I was amazed at him, um, uh, you know. And uh, and and he would always correct me on something if I said this or that. He'd go, "Oh, that's wrong." You know, mm. he was the one who told taught me the full story of Fatty Arbuckle. Mm. 
you know, and that Arbuckle wasn't even in the hotel when the whole thing went down, you know. So, I mean, he he was always correcting me on things that I thought were true and turned out not to be true. And As he, I Google Fatty Ar Arbuckle. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I thought he was in San Francisco in a hotel, yeah. I, I, yeah, Sam, the, uh, St. Francis St. Francis. Yeah, Francis. Yeah, 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 yeah. And supposedly he was put on trial for the death of this uh, woman who essentially was a hooker. Uh, and he three trials until he and they all were hung juries until the third one, which found him incredibly innocent. Incredibly, yeah. They they it, they it made died him, four years later, four days later. Huh? Oh, oh wait, oh no, it's talking about the the person. Okay, I'm reading Wikipedia. Go ahead. Yeah, yeah. I'm trying to remember her name now. Does that have her name there? Virginia Rock. Rappe. Rappe. Yeah. yeah, Virginia Rappe. Um, um, but. Uh, yeah, no, the, the jury said he's incredibly not guilty and has been given a great disservice with mm. these trials. And they were all pushed by William Randolph Hearst, you know, yeah. who didn't like Arbuckle, and uh, they were just trying to pin a murder on him, you know. But, and then he went back and he started directing movies under the name Will Be Good. <laughs> uh, <laughs> But William Goodrich. William Goodrich, but some of them said will be good. <laughs> you know, but anyway. Mm -hmm. But that's the kind of stuff that Checky taught me about. And he was an invaluable service. And when it came to the Oscars, he went, Oh, who cares? You know, they're fixed. You know. Well, that, I think that's what Steve meant. Like every year it's been like snarky, a snarky comment, like because you're like, okay, the Oscars, and you eh, <laughs> you know. <laughs> Well, truth be known, he he's gotten me to say pretty much eh as well, <laughs> you know, um, because I you know I always used to, we always used to he always used to have a thing and he was absolutely right. If I said to you, "What won the Oscar last year?" Anybody remember? Oda. Will Smith. You're right, boy. Oda how did you? The movie, the movie that everyone's still talking about. Yeah. <laughs> Coda. What movie? Coda, the deaf. Coda. About the deaf girl. Yeah, it's a good movie, but hardly rememberable. <laughs> hardly memorable. And this year will be everything, everywhere, all at once. You bet your life. I don't know what the name of the thing is. Uh, and everybody will forget that one in a year. You know, it's never. Raging Bull didn't win. It, it was, uh, what was it? Um, um, the film that Robert Redford directed. Um, Reference. Huh? What? Wasn't runs through it. No, everyone's through it, right? Wasn't no, 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 no. Wasn't no. that one? No, it was a, no. The one with Shirley MacLaine and. Well, all she that dies. Family, Never yeah. Dies. Oh. Terms of endearment. Oh, terms, terms of endearment. Yes. Yeah. You see, you couldn't even remember that movie, but when I said Raging Bull, you knew what I was talking about, right? Oh, sure. Yeah. But anyway, he would always bring up these things like, "Who cares?" You know. Uh, the best picture never wins, and he's right. He's right. So uh, you know, uh, and and it pisses me off because the Oscars are coming up, and I got nobody to talk to about it except Marjorie, and you know, I expect her to. Listen. And me. And you? Well, you. I'll give you a call, Adrian, and we can talk about it. I'll give you a fashion rundown. <laughs> yeah, you give me a fashion rundown. Yeah, God, I'm gonna miss him. Just the songs and the dances and all that stuff in, intertwine in that is a mess. He's been such an and integral, they're going to do it up more this year. He's such yeah. an integral was such an integral part of my life, you know. Yeah, he all was of us. always there, and I was always talking to him. And uh, it's interesting too because there are two different sets of people in his life. If you go on, they had a a text string going where everybody was telling people about what they saw at the hospital and you don't go right now because blah, blah, blah. And um, when he finally died, I felt so left out because it's basically it's Letterman people. Sure. And they knew him in a certain way. Okay. And probably didn't even know that I existed in his life. Mm. You know, so, I remember taking a tour of the Letterman offices, uh, courtesy of Shecky, with you. Yeah, 
they yeah. knew about you. Well, I don't know how much they knew about me uh, because it, I felt very left out on the string, you know. And I mentioned uh, the same thing to my friend Steve and Lori Weiner, who've known him longer than I've known him, uh, because they introduced us, and um, they just uh, they felt the same way, you know. Like they, they don't know we. It's like two separate separate lives that he had, you know. But and this was one of them, which is really. How did you find cool. out? How did I find out what? Did they just call you, or how did you find out he had passed away? Uh, on the on the stream on the on the text. Mm -hmm. uh, okay. I woke I woke up this morning and I looked at the text string and it said died at one forty five a.m. Uh, and um, I don't know how he feels about dying so close to the death of Robert Blake. But you know. yeah, uh, somebody posted that on your Facebook. Somebody shared that to your Facebook page, like right under your thing with Shecky was like somebody shared it with you. And I thought, OK, like, yeah. what is? <laughs> well, he's, I think he said that he died the same day. And I said, no, because Shecky died today and Blake died yesterday. But the only difference is Blake was like 89 years old. Shaq yeah. was only 67, God damn. Yeah, right. You know? Yes. And there was a lot more yeah. life to live. And there were a lot more uh, film conventions to go to. And, I mean, this is what he, this was his social uh, social life. Going to, uh, he used to, he used to like to go to Italy to Portononi. And they have a film festival there every year. And he used to go. I think it was a silent film festival, actually. Um, and uh, uh, that was one of his, his things that he loved to do, which he couldn't do in the last couple of years because of COVID. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, he just, you know, I mean, the, the things he the things he loved to do is he took he took the cruises. He loved cruises, something that neither Marjorie or I are even interested in. You know? <laughs> Although I'm suggesting that we do take a cruise in memory of Shecky. Yes. You know? he, he inspired me to go on one this year. I mean, along with yeah. some other people. But, but he found, he found cruises, which, you know, were so uh, exotic. For instance, he had a cruise that went to the, uh, uh, what do you call it? The Galapagos Islands. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, he and and he went there and just saw all the things that Darwin saw a long time ago, you know. Uh, and then he took a trip, he took a trip to the Antarctic. Yep. Wow. To the Antarctic. That's where he got sick and passed out or something, and they had to put him in the hospital. Um, but I remember what he said about the Antarctic. He said, Boy, penguin shit smells terrible. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I said, I said, how, you know, I said, how are the penguins? He says, take your shit all the time. That's all they ever do. He says, you're up to your neck in, in penguin crap. <laughs> and I'm thinking, well, that was an expensive way to find out the penguins <laughs> smell bad, you know. But uh, he loved his cruises. He took the exotic ones. The one that he said that was the one the best he ever took was just the one to Alaska. Goes up to Alaska. It's supposed to be one of the best cruises you can take. I think we need to have a Monday show cruise in his honor. Yeah. Yes. Like that. Yeah. We should all go on a cruise in his honor. <laughs> but God, he loved you people. And I want you to know that. And We're going to miss him. We really are. I mean, you I know? Think he was a friend, even though I never really met him. But three yeah. years is a long time to talk to somebody yeah. every week. Yeah. You know? Was it three years? Yeah. yeah. 2020 yeah. and starting COVID. Yeah. Yeah, so it was over and over and over again. Yeah, yeah. that's that's a long time. Wow, I I don't talk to a lot of my friends once a week, and here no. I am. <laughs> and he pretty much made it every week. I can't think of a week he wasn't here. He, very few. You very know, few. I mean, occasionally he would be on a vacation, and if he had Wi-Fi, he would call the show. Yeah. Mm. He was terrific. Well, anybody have any last words you want to say to about Shecky? And, you know, huh? Yeah, it's, it's yeah. It, it hit me more than I expected. Yeah, I I can imagine, and I probably hit uh, like Paula never met him at all. She probably maybe could have if if she were out here and Shecky showed up. Uh, <laughs> but Paula, you know, uh, you knew him every week, so it's, it's got to be kind of a shock to you. 
Adrian, I, I, I knew him as your best friend. Yeah. Adrian and Shecky and I, and uh, uh, we used to have Natalia here with uh, uh, ah. the, late, the late Jack Garfine, um, who was another, became a great friend of mine late in life. Uh, you would spend New Year's Eve here every year. It was Adrian, Shecky, and sometimes somebody else and whatever, but it was it was the uh, the group of us. And uh, we haven't been able to do it in the last couple of years again because of COVID. Uh, but we, you know, who knows? Next year we would have done it. This year we would have done it again and invited everybody over and, and done it. Um, Shecky was just such a part of so many people's lives on so many levels. And 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 then because this thing is just a Zoom group, uh, it's it's incredible to see that you know you guys feel about them like you do. Uh, I have a question, Alex. Um, yeah. When you had your show on Sirius XM, which is when I first discovered you, when you're on Sirius mm-hmm. Left in the mornings, um, he called into that show, right? No, I don't think so. Um, he never called he did, into that Did he call show? Marjorie? I don't remember him ever calling. I can't remember. Yeah, if he did, it might have been on a rare occasion. Okay. You know, uh, but uh, yeah, he was my friend and I will miss him. Uh, and I'm sure all of you, uh, likewise, because you all have a different relationship to him, but it's one which which be, this group becomes quite protective of each other. Yeah. And I love that. That's what I love about it. Adrian Just, isn't uh, usually here, but you know she she certainly was a very good friend of Shecky's as well. So just remember, you he loved you. Yes. Yeah. Well, I I I hope so. You know. I think so. Uh, uh, I think he kind of liked you since he always called you right yeah. after the Monday show every week. No, I called him. You talk to I, him every, or, I called yeah. him. Yeah. You said you talked to him every Saturday or Sunday, I want to say, and also Monday at five o'clock. Also yep. Monday. Yep. yep. That was the that was the, the tradition, right? And I don't know who I have to call now that this show is over, but I really thank you all for being here for this fast little show and i'm sorry a lot of the other people who normally would be here aren't here uh because they just didn't get the message yeah. thank you for thank doing you this for alex. Doing this, it, alex this was this thank is you. great yeah thank you i'm sending you a hug you and marjorie uh, hug yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, and and you know i guess if i have any lesson out of this it's just that i gotta I take people that i that i love and care about and hold them closer than i ever have yeah and so I send that out to you, you guys, because you are, mm-hmm. when I say I don't have any friends, I do have friends and they call this show and we talk and we know mm-hmm. each other. And, uh, um, oh, people in my office know who you are now. I'm like, I'm on the <laughs> Alex call. I'm talking to Alex. <laughs> okay. Well, I mean, other than in terms of proximity, Marjorie is the closest to you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. She's, in, she's in the other room. Yeah, right. But we're not far away. So, yeah. Yeah, right. yeah. <laughs> and with, with all her back problems and stuff, I've told her that I really think it's coming pretty close to me having to shoot her. Yeah. <laughs> I'm ready. Put her out of her misery. Yeah. I'm not ready, Marjorie. <laughs> no. Yeah. Anyway, I love all of you, and I'm sure Shecky, if he's out Everybody there, would send his love Alex. right back to you. And he misses uh, being here. Because he wanted to be here today, and that's yeah. that's the sum total of that. Just that's friends cool. calling a friend who lost a best friend. What? Just friends calling a friend who lost a best friend. Yeah, mm-hmm. you'll be okay, yeah. Alex. Yeah, it's gonna be. It's it's. I know it's gonna be fine. You know, I I've been through this before, but I've lost too many of them now, and I guess yeah. that's but, the price but, you have to pay for getting old. My mother's ninety-five, mm-hmm. Alex, and I don't think she has anybody left. So. Hey, I, I still remember. I still remember my mother. Her best friend died at ninety-two. My mother was ninety-three, and she said to me, "How could she die? She was so young." <laughs> <laughs> and that's the way I feel about. Well, in Checky's case, I definitely feel that. Absolutely. Yeah. But anyway, yeah. thank you so much. And uh, I you, send my Adam. love to you. And I'm sure Shecky sends his love to you, too, if he could. And he would love to be here today. I, I hope he's on but a he nice is, cruise somewhere. He is in Everybody. spirit. Everybody wave goodbye. And Bye, uh, Alex. Everybody else have a nice day.